Mind the Mighty Blues, and welcome back to Xenoblade Chronicles. Last time, we took care of every single quest over in Colony 6 that we can take care of for now. And in this episode, before we head on off to confront Egg Hill, we're going to be taking care of Heart to Hearts, as we have an overabundance of Heart to Hearts to do, considering how much our affinity went up over in Agniratha. So starting off here in Colony 9, we have a Heart to Heart over at the Cylinder Hangar. That being with, uh, excuse me, come on, uh, there we go, with Ryan and Melia, Ancient Wreckage. How strange that such a ship crashed here. You know what this thing is? How could I not? This is an Alchemal trading ship. It would have been used to transport ether cylinders. What? So you're saying this is a high end ship? I am saying exactly that. Do you not recognize the design? You saw many similar ships in Alchemoth. I don't know. They were a bit tied up. True, you were rather preoccupied. In any case, I can't help but wonder. If there were any survivors? Yes, precisely. It is possible that one or more people survived the crash. But it would have been a tall order for them to go back to to go get to that that But it would have been a tall order for from them to get back to Alchemoth. It's a long trip, that's for sure. And if they were all into you, they'd stick out like a sore thumb. They would be easy prey for monsters. The ship must have crashed here a very long time ago. But even the Hyentia of old should not have come here. They should have known better. This sounds pretty complicated, but I can tell you upset. How about we give these guys a break, whoever they were? You are getting to know me well. I do say some harsh things. And yes, perhaps it is to mask my own distress. I am grateful for your presence, Ryan. Without you here by my side, I fear I would be far more upset. Oh, great! I was just gonna ask if there was anything I could do! Do not act so surprised, Ryan. You know full well that you've cheered me up. Was that not why you came over and spoke to me in the first place? <laughs> I can see why Shoal calls you in such high regard. What? Well, hang on! What was that last part about why I came over in the first place? Even if you figure stuff like that out, you're not meant to say it. I mean, uh, Roy, let's get out of here. You know, you still look like you- you still look like a silly brute even when you blush. Perhaps it might be advisable to stop doing so. Now, let's rejoin the others. Thank you for all your help, Ryan. Oh, that was so cute! You know, we really don't get much, much of anything between Ryan and Melia. So that's such cute dialogue. I love that. Does this come as a surprise? I feel my explanation is quite reasonable. Do you find something amiss with it? Eh, uh, amiss? Does that mean wrong? Nothing's wrong with it exactly. It's just, I mean, you know. Well, what was the cryptic response? Well, that was a... Uh, well, that was a cryptic response if I ever heard one. Alright, fine. We kind of took the cylinders from the ship and used them. Hmm, I see. Then I must send a request for payment to your colony's leader. You're gonna charge us! I should think that obvious, Ryan. This ship was quite expensive. We cannot provide it free of charge. Is it not a crown princess's duty to collect monies owned to Alchemoth? Oh, so it's like that, is it? And how do you expect us to pay off our bill? The colony's flat broke. Oh, hush, Ryan. I'm merely jesting you. Did you honestly think that I would demand payment? You were joking. That's not fair. You're too good at keeping a straight face. The ship appears to have crashed here a very long time ago. I am not sure whose property it is, but they are unlikely to claim it. If you needed the ether cylinders, then so be it. Oh, that's a relief. You really had me go in there for a minute. A little of you and a, a little of you and others have rubbed off on me. I have learned many new things from you, Ryan. Thank you. Well, you made me blush. There's one thing you gotta know about me. 
I don't need no thanks. But I do more than a pat in the back every now and then. And what of it, Ryan? You seem embarrassed to admit to this. Do you feel there is something wrong with the colony's actions? Nah, not really. If you're all right with it, then far more me. Hmm. You, did you think I would be so miserly as to object? I am offended. Wait a second, I didn't say that. But, you know, the ship must belong to someone. Whoever flew in here could still be around somewhere, right? Perhaps, we cannot be sure. If they are alive, I would assume they have returned to Alchemoth. And if they're dead, then they're one with the Bionis. The family is gonna do, gonna want to know what happened. And that'll cause all kinds of hassle for you, right? Hassle? I fear your concern is misplaced, Ryan. The people of Colony 9 have my gratitude, not my ire. After all, you have saved me numerous times and will continue to do so. At least, I hope that you will. That's A-OK -okay with me. We're on the same team. You need any help at all, just say the word. And you'll do the same for me when I'm in a tight spot, right? You need not even ask, Ryan. The sense of unity in our group means a great deal to me. I would not sacrifice it for anything. What the ship was doing here? Indeed, it was before my time, so I cannot know the circumstances. But it seems odd to me that the ship traveled to the lower regions. Why was it necessary to transport all these cylinders here? There must have been some kind of reason. Yes, but what it was I do not know. All I can be sure of is that this ship was a very old model. I bet that ship that I bet the ship this big got attacked by tons of monsters. All the cylinders on board and stuff. That is very likely. But the ship would have had diff defense systems on board. What if it got hit by one of those telethia things from up your way? I'll bet the defense systems would be no match for it at all. Perhaps, but it does not appear to be damaged. We shouldn't worry over things that are in the past. Come, let us find the others. Oi, hang on a minute. We still don't know anything. And she's gone. Well, no use me stewing over it, I guess. Next up at the Mech on Record site between Charla and Ricky, a Hero Bond's perspective. Shella, tell Ricky about Mechon! The Mechon? Why? Ricky know nothing about history of Mechon with home home. Ricky feels stupid. This is unusual for you, Ricky. I mean, curiosity is a good thing, but what's brought this on? Ricky glad Shola asked. When Mechon attack colonies, Ricky and villagers know nothing. Just sitting in village pon pon ponding about it like normal day. I guess Magna was really on the Mechon's radar. Ricky never saw a Mekon before, only heard of them in whispers. On Prison Island was the first time Ricky saw a faced one. Whoa, Ricky scared. Charlotte was brave though, Ricky embarrassed. Don't beat yourself up, Ricky. I've been fighting the Mekon since I was, well, your height. Charlotte and French stronger than Ricky. Ricky not good enough. No, Ricky, that's not true. What's gotten into you? This isn't the Ricky I know. Normally, you're brimming with self-confidence. Really? Ricky, not Ricky? We know the Nopon and Mekon never crossed paths before. But that doesn't mean we think you're not up to the challenge. You're one of us, Ricky. Ricky, sorry, Sharla. Ricky, feel better now. Don't mention it, Ricky. We've all got our own reasons for fighting in this war. Some fight for their family. Some for the friends they lost. Ricky, happy he talked to Sharla. Ricky, super happy. You and me are friends, Ricky. Don't ever forget that. Let's fight to the very end for all the people of this world. I'm not the best person to ask. There's so much to cover. I'm not sure where to start. Charlotte should hurry up. I'm sorry, Ricky. It's just... For as long as I remember, the Mechon have been the enemy. But if you asked me why, I couldn't answer you. Yeah, Ricky not know too. Ricky, what do you think of when someone mentions the Mechon? Mechon look like sad machines. That's an unusual perspective. I've never seen them that way, but I guess I could see what you mean. 
Ricky, you always think this. Well, our backgrounds are very different. I've never had time to think about their feelings. Sarla has lost many friends. Ricky not sensitive to Sharla. Ricky always pawn up around when should when should talk serious. No, Ricky, it's not like that. It's actually quite nice to find someone who thinks differently. The Mekon have never attacked your home, thank goodness. So it's natural that you'd have a different perspective. Sharla so kind to Ricky. Ricky not know what to say. It's all right, Ricky. You don't have to say anything. What are you talking about? Are you saying you feel sorry for them? Sarah, not like Ricky's words. Well, I guess I don't mean that. We're so different. We're bound to see things differently. Ricky, think Mekon with face is most sad looking. I don't disagree with you there. When we found out there were harms inside them, I, it was shocking to say the least. Ricky feel lucky to travel with Charlotte and friends. We can learn lots. Ricky feel scared most of the time, but see and hear many things. They make Ricky feel better here upon. That's nonsense, Ricky. I think you've got it all wrong. Really? I know the Nopon and Mekon never crossed paths before, but that doesn't mean we think any less of you in a fight. Charlotte and friends think Ricky crash pow Mekon, okay? Yes, so stop worrying about it. We all have our own reasons for fighting, you included. Whether we've lost something or have people to fight for. Yay! Ricky glad he talked to Sharla! I hope I helped, at least a little bit. Just remember, you're one of us. We're all in this together. Wait, where's this heart to heart? Oh, there it is! I was wondering why I didn't spawn. Alright, heart to heart number three for today. Oh, come on, really? Alright. Oh my god, I only had to change three hours. Are you serious? Alright, dumb man and Ricky, glowing in the night. Dun dun, Ricky can see hanging strings. They are quite remarkable. It's an amazing sight. Ricky, no, no, what strings are? You do? Well, what are they? Ricky, no, dun dun. The power of ether. I see. And what else? Ricky don't know anything else. <laughs> Face! Even I know more than that, Ricky. Do they even have schools where you're from? Dandan is my hero. He know way more than Ricky. Ricky, are you alright? You seem to be taken aback. Oh, Ricky surrenders. Ricky, my friend, it is not the end of the world if you don't know something. Good. Because Ricky know nothing about ether. Regret not listening at school. There is much I do not know as well, Ricky. Bionis is a rich and diverse place. Even I have much to learn. But why strings only appear at night? Why Bionis Titan take them make them that way? Ricky, you are the funniest knob on I know. And you know what? I believe the Bionis itself may have forgotten the reason. Ricky loved traveling with Dun Dun. Dun Dun the best partner ever. Why thank you, Ricky. I enjoy visiting the mysterious wonders of Bionis as much as you do. Think you never want to leave friends! Oh, these heart to hearts are so good! They really, really do a good job at making Ricky feel like a genuine character. Which is why I will always prefer Ricky over someone like Tatsu, or Choo Choo, or any of those characters, because they. I mean, Choo Choo's got a little bit of personality, but she's very overshadowed very quickly. She gets like one moment to shine and that's it. And there I go talking about Xenogears again. Ricky not out Dun Dun for free! Kid Pro Quee! That's Kid Quo... Kid Pro Quo, Ricky. And where did you learn that? Ricky, run to Ricky! Did he now? I suggest thinking twice before listening to him, Ricky. So then, what can I do for you? Dun Dun, the Ricky, big secret. Ricky, not know anything about Dun Dun. Please, the Ricky. Why, of course, I'd be happy to, but I'm really not that interesting. That no matter, the Ricky. What food Dun Dun not like? Let me see. Something I dislike: sweet wasabi. 
The sweetness evokes tears and induces terrible bowel movements. Ha <laughs> ha! Dun-dun funny! Sweet for something make dun-dun yuck! Dun-dun like Ricky's little pun! I see. You find this funny, do you? Well, back to the point at hand. What do you know about these strings? They cause my ether power! Ricky's lesson over! I could have told you that, Ricky. You tricked me! Ricky wanted to know about Dun Dun, so Ricky and Dun Dun be friends! Well, if you put it so nicely, how can I refuse? Dun Dun help Ricky pay off debt! So Ricky and Dun Dun make deal? Never. Ricky not happy! Sulky Sulk! You see, Ricky, I am not Melia. Cuteness alone won't win me over. You will just have to try harder. Dun Dun! I'm not making any kind of deal with you. If you run away, I'll be the one left working off your debt. And I don't think the hero upon moniker would suit me very well. No, no, no! That not needed! Dickie see Dun Dun in dream! Dun Dun! <laughs> I've been working at Pollen Works! <laughs> That's it, you agree! We must prevent this from happening at all costs! Oh! String is fishing line! Fishing line, you say? That's quite the conclusion to draw, Ricky. Okay, Ricky changed his mind. Now we have a spider web. A great big spider go round spinning lots of webs. I cannot tell if you're joking or actually believe this nonsense. Ricky upset with Dun Dun. Why Dun Dun so angry with Ricky? I'm not angry with you, Ricky. If you don't know the answer, just tell the truth. Sorry, Dun Dun. Ricky embarrassed and know nothing. We should never be embarrassed by what we do not know. Dun Dun right! Ricky listen now! Please Dun Dun, teach Ricky more! I'd be happy to. There is much we can learn from each other on our journey. Next up on the Bionist leg between Charla and Dunban, Revisiting the past. I've been to this place before. Only once, however. Really? When was that? I remember it well. When Fiora and I were much younger, we came here together. All the way from calling nine? That's no small distance. I was so very afraid as we made our way through Teffer Cave. I can barely even remember the way now. At the time, I was so busy making sure Fiora was okay. Did something bad happen? I mean, if you don't mind telling me, that is. I was about 12 years ago. It was about 12 years ago, I believe. Colony 9 was attacked by the Mechon. This is where we fled to. Oh, I see. That sounds horrible. I was only little at the time as well, but I remember that day. Mechon formed a barrier around our house. I feared the worst. That's when you made a run for it? Yes, but on our way to the shelter, Fiora let go of my hand. She started running back to get something she'd forgotten. Was it important to her? So you braved the onslaught went all the way back? Yes, that we did. It was a keepsake that reminded her of her our mother. Losing it would have devastated her. But why didn't you send Fiora to the shelter first? You could have gone and got it on your own. There was no time. And... And what? She burst into tears. She said she didn't want me to leave her on her own. So with Fiora crying on my back, we braved it all for that keepsake. Wow, that's quite a story. Sounds like you were as much of a hero bat then as you are now. You think so? Well, thank you, Sharla. I do wish we would have been able to see Fiora and Dunban's parents. But there's a detail I do wish more of the Xenoblade games went into. Both 1 and 2 really don't go into, like, the parents of the protagonists, and that's kind of a shame. We still have six left. We've done four and there's six left. Oh my god! Was it just a day out? Are you serious? Do you think I'd bring her here for fun? I'm sorry, it was silly of me to say that. It was about 12 years ago, I believe. Colony 9 was attacked by the Mechon. This is where we fled to. I was only little at the time as well, but I remember that day. I thought you might. All I, all I kept thinking was, don't let them hurt Fiora. 
We ran as fast as our legs would carry us, trying not to look back. I didn't even know how far they'd chase us, and then we were here. I know the feeling. When the Mechon attacked Colony 6, Juju was my only concern. I couldn't think about anything else. Of course, you must feel the same about Juju as I do about Fiora. Yeah, and in a way, he's the reason I became a medic. I had to keep him safe, no matter what. I see. How about you, Dunban? Did you become a soldier because you wanted to protect Fiora? Good question. I'm not really sure, but I don't think so. I think I just signed up because I really hated the Mechon. Come on, that can't be the only reason. I'm talking to the hero of the Homs here. Wasn't there something more heroic behind it? Mm, I suppose it doesn't make it for a very good story. Maybe I'll tell it to you. <laughs> Maybe I'll let tell it your way in the future. How could you be so stupid? Why didn't you just go into the shelter? Leaving the colony was very irresponsible of you. Well, if you put it like that, there's not much I can say. Sorry, Dunban. That was a bit harsh of me. I know you didn't come here out of choice. Of course I didn't. The two of us just didn't make it to the shelter in time. What other option did we have but to run? You're right. When the same happened to us, I ran around Colony 6 looking for Juju like a headless bun of... I see. Then you must know how I felt. You were the oldest sibling as well, aren't you? Yeah, just like you. That's probably why we get along so well. She should have just left it. Didn't you realize how dangerous it was to go back? I agree with you, but it was a keepsake that reminded her of our mother. To leave without it was too much for Fiora to bear. I see. She must have cherished it dearly. We barely managed to escape with our lives. A week passed before we returned to Colony 9. I'm just happy you made it out and made it back alive. Col the Colonel gave me a bit of an earful when we got back. He wasn't happy with me, to say the least. <laughs> well, he'd probably just spent a week worrying about you. There are worse things. Yeah, when I look back on it now, it's actually quite funny. Just like any rant from Vanguar. Next up... Strength of Heart. Incredible. To think this was all rubble not so long ago. That it was. The reconstruction is progressing very rapidly indeed. And the population is growing day by day. It just goes to show. People can achieve anything when they really work together. Teamwork can fell insurmountable obstacles. Looking back on the Battle of Sword Valley. Well, it's a miracle I survived. It's because you're Don Man. Because I'm a hero, you mean. I am no hero. I'm not strong enough to be called that. Don't be silly! You're Dunban, the hero of the Homs! No one's stronger than you! Shulk, tell me something. What do you think of when you talk about strength? Strength of the heart. Good answer, Shulk. I'd expect nothing less from you. The weak of heart eventually lose all they have gained. The only problem is, I don't know how to get stronger in that sense. I can't do exactly do exercise for it. You raise a valid point. It all depends on how firm your convictions are. If you have firm convictions, you are strong of heart. Dunban, do you have firm convictions? During my days as a soldier, I did anything I could to protect you all. So, I'd like to think so, I suppose. Then that means you're strong of heart. You said so yourself. So, you're here after all. Maybe, maybe not. I guess that's not for me to say. Well, you'll always be a hero to me, Dunban. Remember this. Remember, this is my definition of strength. There must be countless other possible definitions out there. I bet everyone has their own. Either way, I'm glad you told me. It all makes sense to me somehow. True strength, when it comes from willpower, right? No need to be thanking me. You figured that one out yourself. In truth, choosing not to fight is, an, is the nobler path. And that's something you realize already, isn't it? Anyway, I think it's time to head back. Good idea. Let's join the others. They'll be waiting. It sucks that there- It requires so much affinity 
to get all of these heart to hearts because this is such good dialogue, man. I really wish there were, like you were able to get through all this easier because this is such good dialogue and yet it's so hard to get to because you need to have so much affinity between the party. So one thing I've noticed while going back to the event theater is in this heart to heart with Colony 6, there's no way to change the look of Colony 6. So even though we've expanded Colony 6 further than this, it won't let us view it that way. That's really weird. I, you know, with the amount of customization the event theater lets you have, I figured they'd at least let you see the colony at different reconstruction levels. Odd. I've realized something. Sometimes you have to depend on other people for support. No one could do everything on their own. I agree. Strength in numbers. So I'm going to do whatever I can, however I can, to support you all. If we work together, we can make it through anything. I hear you, Shulk. That is a sound plan. I can't do this alone. If I'd left Colony Nod on my own, I never would have made it this far. I think you're right, Shulk. And I would have far fared the same. Having companions with us means more than we realize sometimes. They really do. Rowan especially. He saved my skin over and over. But from now on, I'm gonna pull my weight. Don't diminish your achievements. You've done great things already. I can vouch for that. That's nice of you to say, Don Ban. But I feel like I've got a long way to go, and I still need you. I know, Shulk. We all need each other in tough times. I'm no different. So let's keep looking out for each other, and we'll all stay safe. No man is an island. If, I, if it hadn't been for you guys, I'd have been completely lost. I know exactly what you mean. Alone we fall, but together we can achieve anything. I feel like all I ever achieve is waiting for everyone to save me. If anything, I'd say the opposite is true. But you know what? You wouldn't be you if you weren't fretting about these things. Hmm. People say I'm a nice guy, but I just do what comes naturally. What feels right? That is what makes you special. Never lose that, Shulk. Now, how about we rejoin the others? Okay, Donban. Thank you, by the way, for everything. Physical strength. You're not wrong. Without the brute force to repel your enemies, you are never safe. But is that the only meaning? What do you mean? You're strong and powerful. That's how you kept calling Nine safe. Isn't that enough? It's plenty. In fact, it might even be too much. The truth about power is this. All power corrupts, and those who crave it will be corrupted by it. Corrupted? I don't understand. It was once explained to me as I explained it to you now. Those who crave ultimate power lose all else in their pursuit of it. Oh. You, if you were to seek such power, you might lose all of us. And I'm sure you don't want that. Of course I don't. You know how important you guys are to me. It's alright, Shulk. I don't really think that would happen to someone like you. Let's just call it food for thought. Come on, let's head back. Yeah, the others are waiting. Thanks for the lesson, Dunban. It was a real eye-opener. Oh! I'm sorry, I love this scene right here. Seeing Machina kids playing with High Entia and Hom's kids in the park. Oh, this is what world peace looks like. Oh, I love this. We also have another heart to heart. Quiet time. This park is very pretty. There's a park in Colony 9, but it's nothing quite like this. Park bring back memories to Fofiora? It does, actually. It brings back a lot of memories. Shulk, Ryan, and me used to play in the park in Colony 9. Vicky love memories! Park remind Vicky of force! Nature's wonderful, isn't it? When I'm surrounded by nature, I feel alive, like nothing matters. 
Piggy too, Piggy too, grass whispering, trees talking. Whispering and talking, huh? I like the sounds of nature too. I bet you miss Magna Forest sometimes. Fiora's so clever. Fiora understand Ricky's talking and feelings. I like the way you speak. When I hear you talk, I get a nice warm feeling inside. Maybe it's magic. Really? Hmm. Ricky not know why, but not but not usually magic. <laughs> That's okay, Ricky. Not every question needs an answer. All I mean is, I wouldn't change a thing about you. Not change Ricky? That means Ricky good! As long as you keep cheering everyone up, you certainly are. Leave it to Ricky! Ricky's job is to make friends feel bestest ever! Come on, you big ball of fun. Let's see if you can make everyone laugh. Ricky ready, Fiora? Okay, where is mean old Ryan? I make him into happy hum hum. It must just be a coincidence. I just happen to be thinking the same thing you are. That's all. You sort of know what Ricky mean though. If Ryan here, he only complain. He see too cold or too hot. Yeah, that sounds like him. But Ryan has his good points too, if you look hard enough. Ricky know them. Ryan always protect friends back. When show contains her, Ryan first on scene. Kapow! Something like that. And he kept the, pr the promise he made to me. You can always trust him. But Ryan promised Fiora. Tell Ricky, tell Ricky. Not fair to keep secret. A secret? Yes, just the word I was thinking of. It's a secret. It's just between me, Ryan, and Shulk. I'm a I can't tell you, I'm afraid. Not fair, not fair! Rick, Ricky wanted the gang now! Sorry, Ricky. You can not pout You can pout all you want. Come on, let's go back. Playtime is over. Good, Fiora, not good friend. Always oh, teasing Ricky. Fiora, Fiora, don't leave Ricky! Wait for Ricky! Not all memories are good. Ricky, not give what you are mean. Memories are good thing. Not always, Ricky. Memories can be good and bad. Even you must have a few not so good memories. Ricky, not have ending. When Ricky is enforced, Ricky only feel warm and happy. I guess you can't understand. I'm afraid I can't block out all the bad thoughts like you can. Ricky, no fewer can. Just need to have nature all around. You really think so? Maybe we should spend some time together in Magna Forest. Yippee! Fiora and Ricky go now! Ricky and Fiora will be overjoyed! I'm sure it'll be lovely, Ricky. What's wrong, Fiora? Fiora smile upside down! Don't worry, it's nothing. I just wish I could learn to share your love for nature. Fiora not learn! Fiora feel! When Fiora know the true joy of living in the wild! This sounds like fun. We'd better bring peace to Frontier Village ASAP. Anyway, let's go and find Shulk. Thank you, follow Fiora. When Frontier Village have peace, all will up and have big party! I envy you, Ricky. I love being in nature too. But it doesn't make all my problems go away. Why, well, Fiora, not smile? Fiora should smile! Smile and laugh! Park is nice. Park make Ricky happy. Also make Fiora happy. It's not that simple, Ricky. Sometimes even things I like don't make me happy. Mm, Ricky not understand what Fiora say. But Ricky know what Fiora can laugh. Why are you so determined to make me laugh? That's Ricky's job. When friends cry boo-hoo, everyone cry boo-hoo. Hereupon Ricky must rescue friends. Ricky. Cheer Fiora. Cheery Fiora. Make happy Fiora. <laughs> All right, Ricky. It worked. You were right. I'll give you that. I just needed to stop being so down in the dumps. Ricky, love Fiora. Smile. Ricky, want to show Shulk. Come, come, Fiora. Go find friends. Wait, Ricky. There's no hurry. What am I going to do with you? Next up in the ether mine of all places... A wistful glow. This ether lamp, it's like the ones in Tiffa Cave. You mean the ones on the route between our two colonies? Those would have been put there by people from Colony 6. You learn something new every day. 
you seen the yellow you see the yellow glow? That's because the lamp uses electric ether crystals. Didn't know that either. Oh, I guess some days you learn two new things. I don't I do know that electric type crystals glow the brightest. Bingo! Once upon a time, replenishing lamps with fresh ether was my job. It was my very first job, actually. I used to follow the route all the way down into the ether mine. Sounds like fun! I used to get lost when I started, but I soon got the hang of it. We used to time each other. We used to time each other to see how we could get it done. To see who could get it done quickest. You mean you and Gatto? Am I that obvious? You start talking about your own life when I see tears. It had to be Gatto. Didn't think you were even paying attention. Oi! I always pay attention to you. Shulk said something interesting to me once. He thinks you're insensitive when it comes to this kind of thing. He can talk! The only girl he's ever talked to is Fiora. <laughs> I'm almost jealous. I mean, of your male camaraderie. I wonder what it would be like being a guy, doing guy things. Gato would be just a friend. <laughs> Even the most ridiculous thing is a serious question to you. It's quite sweet, actually. I guess that's why I like you. What? What am I missing here? I meant that if I were a guy, I might have been able to fight. I could have stayed with Gatto in Colony 6 until the end. That's all. I really didn't want to leave without him. Not while the Mechon were destroying the entire colony. I'm so sorry, Shola. Maybe I should have just kicked up a fuss like a little girl. Refused to leave. He always thought the best of me, trusting in me, relying on me. But I was never as strong as he thought. Oh, I'm sure letting you go was just as hard for him. But he puts his feelings aside for your sake. So you can live on. So you can lead the colony. I know. But I miss him so much. Cheer up, Charla. Hey, how about this? From now on, I'll work really, really hard. And then one day, I'll be the man of your dreams. <laughs> how long's that gonna take? I can't spend my entire life waiting around. That's my shawl, alright. I like you best when you're giving me that big old smile of yours. Looks like you're learning fast. Keep those compliments coming. And by the way, Ryan, thank you. Oh. So the thing about that heart to heart in particular is you can't do this heart to heart until you've gone through Agniritha. And I can see why. It's all about Gatto. You know, this kind of reminds me of something. In my early stages of dating, I always thought it was really, really bad to talk about, like, past relationships fondly. And, like, bring up experiences you've had with new partners. Because always, I always felt like that would not only paint a bad image for yourself, but also it would... Um, I, I guess cause jealousy, but also it would cause the other person to feel like they don't matter as much. I know that's a weird way of thinking about it, but that is how I interpreted it for a while. And it wasn't until I met my current boyfriend and like talked to him about my experiences and stuff and he took things a lot like how Ryan does. And... It, it's something that kind of made me realize, like, no, it is okay to talk about those things. And seeing the conversations between Ryan and Charlotte, you really do see it. Ryan's just a really good guy who cares about people and doesn't want to feel like their experiences don't matter. Because our experiences are what make us people. And I like that. Although Shulk's saying that Ryan is like... It is not sensitive to those things is completely wrong. I disagree. Like fighting alongside Gatto. I know I can't change the past, whatever I do or say. But when everyone fled the colony during the attack, I was so angry. I wanted to be by his side and fight to the end with him. One good thing came out of it all. You met us. Me and Shulk couldn't have gone far without you, Charlotte. We really needed you. And those people at the camp, I saw how they needed you. 
drawing, I... Wait, I've got all that wrong. There's no need it around it. About it. We need you more than ever. You and your healing abilities are a vital part of our team. That heal bullet of yours has saved my bacon more than once. Thanks. It's nice to feel needed. And you're right. I have an important role to play. One I could have fulfilled if I had stayed in f one I couldn't have fulfilled if I had stayed and fought. Thank you, Ryan. You have an amazing calming effect on me. You know that? That's funny. I'll say the same about you. Just remember that you can't rely on me forever. Someday you'll have to learn how to fight properly. You know, without taking so many knocks on the head. Heh, <laughs> no problems, but I'll give it my best shot. Must have been tough. Not really. It wasn't that bad. I just kept my eyes on the prize. Thauron used to give me a pretty good reward when I first finished. Oh yeah? What'd it give you? A small ether crystal shard. Not big enough to give out any energy on its own. But when I had enough, I'd combine them all to make a cartridge. You could do that back then. Wow, that's some talent. When Shulk asked me to do jam crafting, he ends up hating me. Kali 6 relies on its ether mining. We grow up with it. So using ether and manipulating it to make things comes naturally. Thinking about it brings back so many memories. I collected crystal shards of all different colors. Then I tried mixing them together. I thought I might be able to make an entirely new color of crystal. I combined things like... Electric wind and water? Yeah, things like that. If you mix yellow and blue paint, you get green, right? I figured it had to be the same for ether crystals, so I tried it out. Did you get it to work? I had to go. I had to go doing something like that once. Take a bits of different crystals and mix them all up. Then Shulk started shouting at me for wasting all our good crystals, so I just kind of gave up. Now I guess it's a different in calling nine. You don't have a limitless supply of crystals like we do. Me, Gato, and Juju used to experiment all the time, but. If the color is different, forget it. All you get is a pile of soot. Funny, isn't it? Only a small difference and things don't mix well. Like men and women. Where'd that come from? We're talking about ether crystals. It's this place. I just can't help thinking about certain things. I learned so much from Gatto. About rifles, cartridges, fighting. If only I could turn back time. Don't be so down on yourself. All that frowning is going to give you wrinkles. Not the nicest way to put it, but I can see what you're getting at. Sorry, Ryan. I guess I'm not really acting like myself. But talking to you like this makes me feel calm somehow. I don't even know what you're supposed to be apologizing for. Whatever it is, doesn't matter. Oh, how about we try mixing up some different color crystals? We could be the first people to ever make a new color. Maybe now is not quite the right time for that. But one day, I'll teach you all there is to know about ether crystals. You have to handle them with care, like a woman's heart. Ouch! I get the feeling this stuff's never going to be my forte. Wind crystals and glow moss? What? What does glow moss have to do with anything? I just figured because of the color. Glow moss is green, and wind top ether crystals are green, right? Ryan, even if that made the slightest bit of sense. I was talking about combining different colors, remember? But you have got me wondering what would happen. Then let's give it a go. You and me could get interesting. Cato used to experiment with these things as well. Him and Atharon tried all different things when making cartridges. He used to get so mad when whatever he was trying failed. He taught me all this, using rifles, constructing cartridges. Oh, sorry about that. Didn't mean to remind you. I just thought it might be cool to hang out and combine crystals. Oh, stop it, Ryan. You don't have to tiptoe around me. I just don't want to upset you. Just keep being you, Ryan. Now, let's find some glow moss. So we're going to try out my idea. Nice. Trust me, we're going to make the best ether crystal ever. Even that old geezer of Thoron will be impressed. We've got just a few more left, but next up, Reawakened Memories. I heard it's not on custom to jump from here. To prove your love and devotion. From all the way up here. Wow, it's a bit high, isn't it? 
a bit. But you know someone who's leapt from an even greater height. You mean, Chilk? I think I saw a smile there. Yeah, when the fortress exploded, he didn't hesitate for a second. He jumped to save his sweet Fiora. I only remember bits and pieces. I was so afraid, but when I woke up, there was Shulk by my side. I suddenly felt safe and warm. <laughs> Sounds like you two get along very well indeed. What do you mean? I get along with well with everyone. You, Ryan, my brother. I get it. Playing it close to your chest. But I know what happened after you woke up. Ryan told me. You were all nervous. Didn't know whether to hold hands or not. Ryan said that. Not just him. Dunban had plenty to say as well. Ryan and Dunban. They need to take a look in the mirror. I'm sure they have bigger things to worry about than my love life. It's natural, Fiora. We're all anxious for you and Shulk. Follow your heart. Just remember to be careful. First love can end in tears. Not you too, Sharla. I've had enough of everyone sticking their nose in my business. We only want the best for you. Don't look back on this time with regret. Go get your man, Fiora. Mm, it's so sweet that everyone cares about the relationship and wants to see them succeed. It's, it's so sweet. I'm not telling. You're a sneaky one, you. But it's okay. I know how nice it can be keeping these little secrets. Shala, I... Hold it there, Missy. You were about to spoil the mood by apologizing for no reason. How do you know that? How do you do that? Nothing gets past you at all. <laughs> Trust me, Gato had it much worse than you ever will. But if you need any help, don't hesitate to ask Big Sis Sharla. Although, Dunban strikes me as the type you who'd know a lot about this. Dunban? Even Ricky knows more about relationships than him. <laughs> Ricky is married, after all, so he's got one up on both of us. You mean... Ryan. Ryan didn't jump. He fell. And fell hard. I'm talking about Shulk. You know, the one you fancy? When the fortress collapsed, he jumped straight off. He spared no thought for himself. All he cared about was saving you. But it's the same with you and Ryan, isn't it? He kept you safe. We talked about it once. I think his exact words were, I saved her. It was me. Oh dear. That boy doesn't shut up. He seemed happy with himself. Sounds like Ryan, all right. If, if it was just between you and him, then I guess it's okay. What do you mean? You remember how Ryan made you that promise? That he protects Shulk no matter what happened? Now Shulk is a stronger person. Ryan is feeling a little inadequate. I didn't realize. So that was all about showing me he could protect someone? Oh, so that was all about showing me he could protect someone. You. Or was it just Ryan being adult? No need for any big leaps of logic. Kidding! He didn't say that! Phew, I guess even Ryan isn't that stupid. Even he knows we survived because we fell into the water. You could have hurt yourself even falling into the sea. But no, Ryan didn't say a thing. I know he really likes you though. How about we concentrate on you first and me later, okay? No fair, Sharla. I shared with you. Next time we have dinner, you're going to tell me everything. Well, okay. I can't avoid it forever. But you're buying, Fiora. We're almost done with this. <laughs> we only got two more left to do. So next up, a snowy hot spring. Ricky, God second, I wanted to ask you something. Ricky, what are you doing? Ricky, love hot water! Oh, no, panda, hot swing! Oh, right. Gotcha. The water actually looks kind of chilly, though. Not too hot, not too cold. My mistake. I thought it just looked cold. Ricky, look across snowy hills and enjoy hot water. It perfect shulk. 
I don't really see the appeal, but if you like it, that's cool. Shulk jumping, what to do? You want me to join you in there? And the way Shulk never know how good hot spring is. I guess you're right. Do not worry, Shulk. Shulk will like water, same as Ricky. Oh! The guy's just blown him away. Time for me to make a run for it. Sorry, Ricky. <laughs> Wait, what? Shulk, what the hell? You're just gonna abandon Ricky like that? That's horrible. <laughs> oh my god, Shulk. Shulk's still a little pun. I'm still a kid. When Shulk become 40, Shulk understand Ricky's hobby. It's gonna be a while then. So Shulk should learn from Ricky and become great hum hum adult. Oh! The guy's just blown him away. All things considered, I'm not sure Ricky is the best role model. Ricky's nose not stop running! That can't be good for you, Ricky. Better get out while you can. If Ricky leave Hot Spring now, Ricky to gold. Stop acting like a kid, Ricky. Ricky the child! Ricky 40 years old this year! Shulk's just a little pun! Sorry, Ricky. But Shulk right. Ricky sometimes act like a little pun. Ah! The guy's just blown him away. I'm starting to wonder if Ricky's lying about his age. Ricky learned his lesson. Great, now I'll bring you a hot drink so you'll be less cold. Wow, thank you, Shulk. Back in a minute. Ricky, look forward. Hey, what's going on? Where's Ricky gone to? Ricky! Hey, Ricky! You hear? And the last one for today. On the distant fingertip. Those waiting for you. Look, Shulk, look! Hitty village get really small. It sure looks tiny from up here. I can't believe we're down we were down there so long ago not so long ago. What a view. Amazing! Ricky see Bayon is so well from here. Ricky think he can see part where Oka and Little Pon are. I think you're right. All your family are waiting for the day you come home. But things are different for me. What wrong, Shulk? Shulk not look happy. Shulk need to talk to Uncle Ricky. Maybe I should. But I kind of feel like you wouldn't understand. No, Ricky understand everything. Believe in Ricky, Shulk. Okay, here's the thing. My parents died a long time ago. So when I go, go home, there won't be anyone waiting. That is big shame. Ricky suddenly really realize! Ricky have good idea. What is it, Ricky? Ricky becomes Shulk's daddy pun! Then Shulk get new mama pun too! Live like happy family! What was that, Ricky? Shulk use big hob hob brain! Shulk can live with Ricky and Oka, then Shulk have family waiting. Shulk never gets sad again. Shulk not like Ricky's idea. Ricky very, very sorry, Shulk. Ricky only want to see Shulk happy. No, it's not that. Thank you, Ricky. Thank you so much. No one's ever asked me to be a part of their family. Shulk not worry anymore. Ricky want to always see Big Hum Hum smile from ear to ear. Then Shulk go show Melly and friends sm smile to cheer them up. What? Wait, Ricky! I'll go and show them right now! You're a great friend, Ricky. Again, it is such a shame that we have to go through heart to hearts to see how good of a character Ricky is, but he really is such a wonderful character. I love Ricky so much. That was mean. I'm sorry. I can't really tell you everything. It still hurts to remember it. Shulk not trust Ricky? But Shulk know Ricky has 11 little pun. Why are you so eager anyway? 
Ricky no one to see Shulk's upside down smile. Hiding feelings is bad for soul. Ricky Shulk's and not let it all out. Shulk's and let it all out. I guess, but... But also, Ricky know that Shulk must want to talk. So Ricky wait for a good day when Shulk talk to Ricky. Thanks, Ricky. When I feel I'm ready, I'll let you know. You cool with that? Ricky very cool. Ricky and Shulk very best friends. Friends always listen to friends, and Ricky and Shulk best friends. Shulk want to go back now? Dun dun dun, all friends will be worried. You're a good friend, Ricky. Stop silly talk, Shulk. Shulk be very silly, hum hum. What did I say? Shulk need to remember all stuff that happened with friends. Shulk will realize something if he think really, really hard. About our journeys together. Yes! Shulk meet lots and lots of new people on his travels. All Shulk's new friends will be waiting to see Shulk again. Really? You think he'll still remember me? Yes, of course remember Shulk. So Shulk must not forget to remember friends either. Or Ricky go here upon mad at Shulk. Then I better not forget. Thank you, Ricky. You helped me realize something important. I have my very own family already. You don't want need no thanks. Ah, Ricky forget them don't want him. Now Ricky get Biff Bash on head. He's a funny one. But thanks, Ricky. I owe you one. How is this relevant? I remember it all, but what's that got to do with what we were talking about? Shulk still not understand. Shulk, Ricky start water leak from eyes. Why is it getting you down? What did I say to make you feel like this? Tell me. Shulk really, really not know. Shulk meet many, many new friends on travels. All Shulk's friends will be waiting for Shulk to come back. Ricky needs Shulk to understand. Ricky know in his heart truth. Oh, I understand now. A Thor aren't you, too, and even the people of Hidden Village. Yes, well done, Shulk. So Shulk stop saying silly things and put smile on Hom Hom face. Wow, kind of embarrassed. How did I miss that? Shulk, no, no. Come now, come on, Hom Hom, back to work. I'm right behind you, Ricky, and I'm gonna give the others a great big hug when I see them. I owe you one, Ricky. Thanks. And that is everything that I wanted to take care of for now. Before we end things off, I do want to state one thing. I've mentioned it multiple times during this playthrough, but I'm going to mention it again. If you are someone who is going for either every side quest you can get, or trying to get as many quests done as you can, make sure that every timed quest that you have not completed is done by this point in time. If you do not, those quests will disappear forever, and you will not be able to finish them at all. So keep that in mind. And with that said, next time on Xenoblade Chronicles, we're finally going to confront Egil once again. And until then, I will see you all later. Goodbye!